Hey there, my name is Suman and welcome to Purple Pie Studio. So this is the lesson 15 of this After Effects series where we are going to learn how to create and animate 3D shapes with 3D cameras all in After Effects. And as always, you can download the practice file of this video from the link in the description. So go get it from there and follow along with this lesson. And first, let's check out how to create 3D shapes in After Effects. Let's start with creating one square shape with stroke width of 50 pixels and another square shape keeping the fill color and cancelling the stroke width. Let's select this shape layer and let's rotate it by around 45 degree to get this kite shape. And now let's rename the layers to keep it organized from the very start of the animation. And let's change the color as well. And then let's align the shapes with the align panel. Okay, now we are going to convert this layer into 3D layer. So for that, if you go in the timeline, here is the icon to convert the layer into 3D layer. If you click on it, now the layer is converted to 3D layer. In case you are not finding this particular section of the timeline, just make sure to expand the switch from here. Okay. And also let's convert this layer into 3D layer as well. So once the layer is converted to a 3D layer, if you open the transform property, you can see in position, you have three different properties as well as in scale. Now, even in, we have orientation and for rotation, we have rotation for individual axis, even the Z axis. And now we're going to change the renderer from here, from classic 3D to cinema 4D. Now, note that you can only get this option only when you have any any one or more than one 3D layer in the timeline. And once the renderer is changed to Cinema 4D, we get another set of properties under the layer to work with, which is the geometry options. Now let's change the views to two views. In most of the cases, if you are working in 3D, you are going to work with two views. So this is the active camera and this is the top view. You also have four views where you get right and the front view additionally. But right now we are only going to work with two views. Now let's select this square ring and increase the extrusion depth to 40. And now if we check out the shape, it's completely converted into an actual 3D shape. And then for the cube, we are going to increase the extrusion depth to 200. Also, I would like to decrease the size of this cube a little bit. Okay, now to center the anchor point of this 3D shapes, all we have to do is divide the extrusion depth value and add it to the Z axis of position and anchor point. So for extrusion depth for this square ring is 40. Let's add 20 in the Z axis of position as well as in the anchor point. And now the anchor point is completely centered. Same we can do for the cube as well. And now just select this square ring and rotate in the Y axis for 90 degree. And let's select this cube and align it properly at the center with respect to this ring. Because we are actually going to move this cube in this direction. So now let's animate the 3D shapes in After Effects. So let's align the shape with the center of the composition window. You can even change the position from the secondary window as well like I'm changing the position from the top view. Okay, now let's select the square ring, open the rotation property, add a keyframe on the Z axis. Let's jump on to next 40 frame. And remember, I am in 30 FPS. And let's give the rotation of around minus 180 degree. And for the first keyframe, let's give it zero degree. From the second keyframe, let's jump on to next 40 frame again and give it minus one, which gives a full rotation and is is the keyframe. And let's add keyframes on the orientation on the frames where we have keyframe on the Z rotation property. For the orientation, let's start with around 18 degree. Let's jump onto the next keyframe and rotate it in the opposite direction. So let's give it around 340 and then for the last keyframe, just copy and paste the initial keyframe and easy is these keyframes. Now let's select the cube layer, open the position property and add keyframe. But first let's separate the dimension of the position property and add keyframe on the X position property. 
let's jump on to the next keyframe and move it in the x axis in the opposite direction and then on the third keyframe let's copy and paste the initial keyframe and easy is the keyframe again open the rotation property and we are going to add a keyframe on the x axis so let's start the rotation from 0 degree then 180 we are actually going to rotate the ships in the opposite direction so let's give it 180 and then 360 which completes one cycle and then again easy is this keyframes and now let's change the motion graph editor to give a smooth and nice motion so let's start with the x position property of the cube and then for the rotation and I would also like to give the same motion graph for this rotation. So select this three pair of keyframes and I'm using the is copy plugin. Select on copy in the copy section to copy the motion graph and then select this three set of keyframes and then click on is in the paste section. Now let's change the view from two to one and we can preview the animation now. And now we are going to learn how to add and use 3D lights in After Effects. So right click on the timeline, new and lights. Click on it and here you have few settings for the light. So I'm going to keep the light type to spotlight for now. Let's increase the intensity to around 160 and even change the color and give it a little yellow shade to the light and press OK. And now you can see some 3D light appeared it looks somewhat like a camera if you go to two view and it's going to be easier to adjust the light from the top view so let's select the spotlight one and let's move it over here and then let's open the properties under the transform and change the point of interest and we are going to keep it exactly at the center of the composition which is also the center of this ring as well now let's go to light options and increase the cone feathering to 100%. And now let's duplicate this light layer one more time. And for this light, go to transform and we're only going to change the X position property, keeping the point of interest constant. Okay, now let's get back to one view. And here you can see the animation. And finally, we're going to learn how to use 3D cameras in After Effects. So here we have a background grid layer. It's just a simple illustration that I have made in Adobe Illustrator. So let's convert it into a 3D layer. And let's change to two views. And we're going to push this layer back in the Z axis. As well as we can even scale it up as well. All right, now let's add a 3D camera. So right click on the timeline, go to new and then camera. So there are two types of cameras in After Effects, a one node camera and there is a two node camera. Right now, we're going to choose the two node camera. From here, you can name the camera. I'm going to keep it as it is. From here, you can select a preset. So I'm going to select around 35 mm, press OK. So now inside the camera, inside transform, you get a point of interest and a position property and the other properties are also similar to any transform property you get with other layers and inside camera options, you get a lot of other options from here. You can add zoom in to change the focal length and you get a lot of options. But right now we are only going to work with the position property and remember that when we selected the camera, we kept it two node. If we would have kept it one node, there won't be any point of interest. So the point of interest is only available for two node cameras. So let's add a keyframe on the position property. Let's jump on to next keyframe and add a keyframe. And for the first keyframe, let's change the position in this direction in the X axis. And for the second keyframe, let's change the x-axis position to the opposite direction, keeping the point of interest constant. So right now the point of interest is exactly at the center of the composition, which is also the center of this square ring. And let's jump on to 
the last keyframe and simply copy and paste the first keyframe and erase it. Now what we are going to do is just select this pair of exposition keyframes, copy the motion graph editor and paste it in the camera. And this is how it looks. Of course you can play with the camera angle even more, maybe changing the position or you can even change the point of interest to get a better effect with the camera. And if you want the similar effect from the intro animation, just add a new adjustment layer and apply glow effect on it and maybe decrease the threshold a little bit and increase the intensity to about 3 or 4. On top of it, you can even add noise with amount of noise of around 15%. And then if you want to change the color while animating, you can use hue saturation. And from the master hue, you can change the color. And one more thing, when you are working with Cinema 4D Renderer, it uses up a lot of resources. So for that, while you are previewing the animation, from preview panel, just change the preview resolution and decrease it to either third or quarter. And you can see I am actually previewing it in thirds. So it is actually going to preview your animation faster while you are doing the animation. Alright, so that is it for this video. I hope you learned something new from it, which you can use in your future projects. So if you like the video, then make sure to hit the like button. If you have any doubt regarding the techniques, then make sure to comment down below. I would be happy to help you out. And if you're here for the first time, then make sure to subscribe the channel and hit the bell notification button to stay notified for all the future updates. Until then, goodbye.